I'm Frank. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at your wired alarm sensors. Sensors are an important part of any system because they're like the eyes and ears of the system. They'll tell it when something's been opened, when something's moving. They are your first line of defense. Let's start with window and door sensors. Your do-it-yourself kit comes with a package of 10 all-purpose sensors. They can be mounted on a window or a door. They're simply a magnetic switch embedded in this plastic shell and a magnet in the second shell. They have peel and stick drips on the back of each one. You would mount the switch either on the window frame or on your door frame. The magnet would go on the movable part. When the system is closed, they would line up next to each other. When the window opens, the magnet would move away from the switch and it would in turn send a signal to the alarm control that that window has been opened. These particular sensors are of good quality because they're already sealed and the, the wire is already attached so you don't have to worry about attaching any wires. Now these switches come in a variety of styles. You can get a sub-miniature set. They work the same way as the others, only they're just very tiny if you have limited space to work with. You can get a pair that would have a screw terminal on them and they, they also work the same but you can take the wire and screw it to these instead of having to wire net them and tuck them in the drywall. There are a couple other kind of sensors you may want to use on your doors. Instead of having a surface mount you may want to have a recess sensor. This particular switch is 3 8 round. You would drill a hole in your door frame up into the attic pull the wire down through that hole, connect it to your switch, there's screw terminals here, push it right up into the hole in the door, drill a hole down so it lines up. When the door is open, the magnet would move away, telling the alarm this, that the door has been opened. This particular combination is very popular for inside doors with wood frames. There is also a plunger if your door has steel in it, a plunger might be a good answer because the steel will eventually become magnetized and could cause you a problem with a magnetic sensor. The plunger switch would be mounted on the hinge side of the door. When the door is closed, it would push the button in. When the door opens, the button would be released, telling the alarm the door has been opened. There is also a rare earth recess switch. The switch portion is the same as the bullet sensor, but the magnet is a very tiny rare earth magnet and it's very powerful. If you had a limited amount of space to work in, certain types of windows where you could recess the switch but you're afraid to drill in because of the glass, this type of a sensor might work better for you. The last type of door sensor I'd like to show you is called the overhead door sensor. It's not typically done in a normal home because you wouldn't want to be faced with the problem of jumping out of your car, racing in the house, and disarming your system in 30 seconds. It's just not practical. But if you have a business, a warehouse, or something that uses overhead doors, this is the type of sensor to use. It's durable. You could ride a truck over it, and it also has a lot more play in it. Whereas a normal window and door sensor would have about a half inch of play, no more than an inch. This will give you two inches. Because garage doors don't typically fit exactly tight, this gives you a little leeway and makes that door secure. All right, let's move on to motion detectors. A motion detector is considered to be a backup to your window and door sensor. You want to locate it in a likely traveled area. And what that means is that if a crook was smart enough to break the glass out of the window, climb through that hole in the broken glass and not physically open the door and walk in, where would they most likely go? Well certainly between the master bedroom where you hide the jewels under the mattress, the family room where the DVD is, if you can find an area in between those two locations to mount your motion sensor, it's very likely that you're going to catch this person. Motion detectors come in a couple different types. Either corner mount or wall mounted or ceiling mount are the two main categories. 
A ceiling mount would get mounted like a smoke detector, usually in the middle of a big room. It could broadcast a big circle of protection. Anybody coming from any direction would break that circle and set the alarm off. By far the most popular is the corner mount detector. And that's because it can reach out 35, 40 feet and it can cover a large area. So a small detector nestled up in a corner can really divide a house almost in half. And it does this with infrared technology. It's looking for your body temperature versus the ambient air temperature. When it sees that temperature, it'll look for movement. It can detect movement because it broadcasts these beams, fingers of protection out into the room. When the temperature mass breaks two of the beams, it will tell the, that there is a person moving in its space and that will activate the alarm. So putting it where a person will cross the beams is much more effective than putting it where somebody can walk up in between the beams. Theoretically, you could walk up maybe some distance because the further from the detector, the wider the beams become. These are made to be mounted seven feet off the floor. It'll give you the optimum reach. They shouldn't be tilted. It'll put beams out, actually one very far, one medium beam, and one down. And some detectors will broadcast straight down. And those can be mounted even over a door. It'll catch somebody coming in a door and out in the room at the same time. While we're talking about detectors, even though this kit doesn't come with a glass break detector, we should show you what it looks like and basically tell you a little bit of how it works. They also would mount on a wall. It can hear usually at a 25 foot radius around the room. What it's listening for is the particular frequency, the pitch that breaking glass would make. When it hears that pitch, it activates the alarm. Now we use these sensors more often in stores, a place where you have a big uh, plate glass storefront, that type of thing. Occasionally they're used residentially. If you have a room with a lot of glass in it, it may be a good idea to use this sensor. These can be mounted on a wall, opposite glass, or in a ceiling along where the glass is, or on the same wall between two windows. It's very flexible, basically where you can reach it with the wire is the key. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about is a smoke detector or fire detectors. In most cases, an electrician has already installed smoke detectors outside of all your bedrooms, which are very good for waking you up if you're sleeping, but if you're not at home, not too good. One connected with a monitored alarm system will call the fire department for you. It's a big distinction and it's something that most people should consider when they're installing an alarm. All of the alarm systems are able to support smoke detectors, especially if you have a monitored system or you use the optional voice dialer. They're a good addition to have with your system. Okay, that'll wrap up our section on sensors. In our next step, we're going to concentrate on the wiring and show you how to actually connect these sensors to your control unit. Thanks for joining me.